So Angus, Nessun Dorma, the global governance of the biosphere. Tell us about that. Nessun Dorma is Latin or Italian for none shall sleep. It uh, comes from the famous aria uh, sung by Pavarotti in Turandot. And uh, I think that our problems of biophysical integrity are worsening to such an extent that we shouldn't be sleeping now. Mm. We've got to do something radical about it. That's what our ecological leaders are telling us to do. We need radical system change. And so listening to what they say mm -hmm. and the directions of, of, of other strategists, they say, let's go global with this. It's time to up the ante. Everyone's guilty yep. of biophysical degradation. There isn't a person on earth that's not guilty about, of it. And so it's time to move up to the next level and actually put in an authority in place, I believe, mm. supranational authority, given taxation powers, given regulatory powers, whose job it is to provide us the classic trade of utility, that's all it is, mm -hmm. classic trade of utility, provide us with a sound biophysical future now and for the ultra long term. So, I mean, scientists talk about this, this uh, you know, degradation of the, the biosphere, but, but you're coming at it from a different angle, aren't you? Yes, my history with regard to this topic is that I am the son of a diplomat, so I grew up in countries all around the world, so I was sort of an early global citizen. I spent 20 years in the city, uh, that is the financial centre of, of Europe, London, um, just when capitalism was going global. So I saw this new language of converting natural capital into human capital really go global during the periods of the 80s, 90s and the noughties. Mm. And then I've spent some time in the environmental space as well. I worked for the Prince's Rainforest actually, uh, project, I actually founded that. Uh, for the Prince of Wales, and I have my own environmental charity. And as a result of those experiences, um, being a capitalist, being consumerist, uh, just being a member of the public, um, I'm able, in a way, to speak very freely. I've got no uh, no bars held with You're regard to that. Yeah. So some people have <laughs> global capitalism is the is the root of that problem. But you obviously see that also as a as a solution. Well, certainly, I think you've discussed in, in the past market pricing, for example. But I think it just what where my area of expertise comes, if there is one, is the potency mm. of the capitalist consumer system that we've unleashed, and that's just going to be intensifying. So that's something I know very well. So I know what a supermarket looks like and that we have 40,000 stock keeping units in a large stock supermarket. I know that in, in Africa, they don't sell nappies yet, but they're going to. So I know what the destructive force of capitalism consumer is about to do as we go from 77 trillion of global GDP up to 180 trillion of global GDP per annum by 2050. So that's the angle I come from and it scares me. And so I sp this is why I'm here talking about Nessun Dorma, because I think um, it's, time for th it's, it's time to wake up. Yeah. And we can do it as well. So it sounds like you've got a really positive message. I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty depressing out there. So I guess you need that. It's incredibly depressing. Um, I give statistics to 2050, where the rate of extinction of animals goes up by three and a half fold. So we've currently made 8% of all animals extinct. And by 2050, the IUCN, uh, forecast is 28%, for example, or parts per million of carbon dioxide equivalent in the troposphere, currently 403, will be 473. So there almost isn't one sphere of the biosphere that is not getting materially worse, probably in a non-linear fashion. So you're right, it is depressing. But we need radical change. I'm advocating that we put in the first supranational authority to run a biosphere. It's, it's, it's to me just completely rational. And I would also argue that we're actually 80% of the way there. Okay. And the reason for that is that the two preconditional points for radical change are now in place. The first is recognition of the problem. That is now global. People know. Mm. Oh, governments don't know. Yeah. Oh, someone. Everybody knows because we're just part of the biosphere and we see the degradation of what we've caused. So that is in place 60 years after Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring. And the second thing, which is, which is preconditional factor, is the ability to form a quorum at the level at which you're trying to form a quorum. So if we're going to go global, we need to be able to form a global quorum. Mm -hmm. Now I'm advocating that we hold a vote 
a, a voluntary online vote for anyone who's 13 years and old, older, of which there's 5.85 billion of us. And of that, 4.5 billion are connected. And within the 4.5 billion, 2 billion are hyper-connected, the first global generation of the digital age. So our numbers overwhelm any democracies that have existed so far. And those two things are preconditional. And now we just need to take the last step, and that is go for the vote. So, I mean, the, the idea of global governance will raise the hackle in many people, but are you seeing that is, that's how bad it's got that we need to get to that stage? You know, there are lots of grassroots um, um, initiatives which are, which are vital um, in sl trying to slow the tanker down. You know, I call them sea anchors. So, you know, you've got this massive tanker heading towards the rocks and people are throwing out the sea anchors desperately trying to slow the thing down but it isn't slowing down, it's accelerating in its intensity of biophysical destruction. So I'm afraid, I think we've got to, we've got to move radically. That's the message we're getting.